It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. Slack gets hacked. Ellen Powell almost gets a verdict. And our guest, Tim Stevens, has the week in review. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 304 for Friday, March 27th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies is the most comfortable and hip underwear you'll ever wear. Check out all the styles and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash twit. Welcome back to Tech News Tonight. I am Megan Maroney. Joining us to discuss the big tech news of the week is Tim Stevens, editor-at-large at CNET. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Meg. So this week, Twitter released Periscope, their live streaming app that lets anyone become an instant broadcaster, streaming directly from their iPhones. Why is everyone going so crazy for this? I honestly don't know. Uh, it's a bit of a curious user experience for me. Most of the times when I see someone is streaming something live, I'll click on the link and they'll have already stopped streaming by then. Uh, but we have seen some cool implementations. I mean, people were meerkatting like crazy at the Apple event for the watch not too long ago. Uh, and then, of course, there was uh, the big fire in the East Village in New York City uh, this week, which was covered pretty extensively on Periscope. So, you know, Periscope's got a, a big kick in the butt thanks to having Twitter b b backing it, basically. It's got the official Twitter integration, a lot of users there. Uh, it's going to be an interesting battle going forward with uh, Meerkat and Twitter, but I'm bummed that neither of them are available on Android. That to me is, is quite frustrating. Yeah, I mean, why do you think that is? Is it, they do not have enough money? I mean, it seems like Twitter would have enough money to, to develop an Android app. Why aren't they doing that? Yeah, it's definitely a question of resources, I think, by and large. There are some incentives for app developers who choose to launch on iOS exclusively when it comes to placement and that kind of thing. But, but ultimately, you know, if you've got a limited set of resources, uh, targeting multiple platforms it can make things a lot more complicated. So I understand it, uh, but it is frustrating. Yeah, the fire in the East Village that you mentioned yesterday was, I think, the first news, the first breaking news that happened on Periscope. And, I mean, I tuned in, and it was just a lot of people with their phones, you know, videotaping it and um you know there was no no one explaining what happened i mean it was it was yeah. just it was a little and then you also feel a little weird for watching it also you know? yeah it definitely was a bit curious i mean a lot of people are saying this is the future of news but you know i really hope that it isn't the future of news because if you tune into 24-hour news networks that they have the duty of kind of informing you of what's going on and doing interviews and being you know fact checking and all that sort of thing whereas we just had a lot of people standing around shooting video of smoke uh that i don't think is very compelling and i don't think it's it's very good journalism i don't think it's news at all uh you know it's definitely good to be able to get there and see that footage up front but ultimately and i don't see that being the future of news at all uh so it is you know interesting footage interesting that we can do that sort of thing now but um but you know i hope that this isn't the sort of thing that cnn starts to rely upon to bring us news broadcasts in the future well i wonder if it will be uh, if it'll evolve the way twitter evolved i mean when i first heard about twitter I was like most people, like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to say what you were doing all the time and where you were all the time? And I mean, <laughs> and now it's evolved and some people are still confused by it and would never tweet. Um, but, you know, it's a part of life. It's a part of news. I mean, I'm just wondering if that's the way. Do you, do you think that's what might happen with Periscope? Uh, it's entirely possible. And, you know, this is the sort of thing that people are kind of freaked out about with Google Glass of filming video all the time and wherever you go. And, you know, if indeed this becomes a trend on Periscope, then then maybe that was what Google Glass was destined to be in the first place. Certainly, you don't want to be walking around all the time holding your phone up in front of you. But if you had something built into something that was on your face, that would make things a lot easier. Uh, I do think that's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, like you said, maybe this is the sort of thing that people will just start to do. And uh, like the selfie, everyone will just shrug their shoulders and get on with it. Right. And it'll be banned. I mean, meerkatting and periscoping will be banned just like the selfie stick is banned. And, you know, we'll have to create all kinds of rules. I know you mentioned we mentioned before that it's not available on Android, but on CNET, you had a you right. two, few Android apps that were similar. Um, right. Which were those things? Uh, 
Yes, stream, S-T-R-E dot A-M, and there's another one called uh, Tarsi, so I had to look those up. Uh, bo both of them offer similar functionality. The, the, of course, problem is that they don't really have as many users as either of Meerkat or Periscope at this point. So, you know, in terms of social networks themselves, they don't have much to offer there. But if you are on Android and you want to do the same sort of streaming thing, both of them will tweet links out to your Twitter account so other people can join in. Uh, so if you want to get get a, a try on that on Android, those are, your, those are your best options right now, I think. Excellent. So let's move on to Facebook. There was a deluge of Facebook news as week because of yeah. F8, the developers conference. What do you think was the most important thing to come out of the, all of their announcements that they made? It was definitely interesting to hear a little bit more about what they hope to do with Oculus. Unfortunately, they didn't really give us a solid indication of what their hopes and goals for the, the company are and virtual reality in general. But they did talk a little bit more about how basically, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Matrix and uh, books like Ready Player One, you know, trying to basically give the impression that what you perceive as reality is not necessarily what is reality. And if you can make something that's compelling, it doesn't really matter whether it's real or not. So, you know, there's definitely a lot that you can think about there. What exactly is Facebook going to do with Oculus Rift? But ultimately, you know, they did promise a standalone apps for Oculus. They did promise a lot of integration for Oculus. And they did say that the Oculus consumer hardware is coming uh, very soon, but again, they still didn't give us an actual formal date, which is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, but it was interesting anyway to, to have them have that much of a focus uh, on Oculus Rift as that being a big thing for them, despite not having any major announcements. You know, they did spend $2 billion on the company a year ago. Uh, so I think it's about time for them to start showing us what exactly uh, we're going to do. Maybe something a little more concrete, maybe ship the hardware finally so I can go buy one. Right. Well, it is interesting. I mean, I uh, we're on spring break in uh, our neck of the woods and, you know, all of these families that I know are all in Hawaii or Cancun or Costa Rica. Mm. And it is, you know, it's like that is kind of my own virtual reality goggles when I go and scroll through all their beautiful yeah. pictures while I am here in Petaluma. And soon we can be meerkatting in full 360 and you can uh, be like you're sitting on the beach with them. Exactly. Uh, so last night I talked briefly about Facebook's connectivity lab. That's their plan to beam lasers, beam internet down, <laughs> drones and lasers. I love yeah. all the words, internet, drones, lasers. Do you have any idea how this is going to work? It's pretty exciting stuff. The idea basically that they'll have a drone that's as big as the 737 effectively, a solar powered drone that can be on station up there in the, the upper atmosphere for months at a time, basically acting like a big repeater and beaming down beautiful, soothing waves of internet down upon all those who are beneath us. Uh, it, it's part of the internet.org effort that, uh, that Zuckerberg is trying to push forward and trying to basically get more internet to more places, uh, which is in, in theory a great initiative. Uh, but of course, there's always the, the shadow of Facebook lurking in the background, the question of are we really bringing the full internet to all these places or are we bringing the Facebook internet to all these places? You know, is it like bringing AOL to the masses back in 1993 versus bringing, you know, the full internet? Uh, that's the, the big question on my mind. But yeah, it's definitely very exciting stuff. It's similar to Google and their project Loon, basically, and they're using balloons. Facebook wants to use flying drones. Either way, it's it's cool stuff, it's encouraging stuff. And, uh, you know, more internet, more places. I think that's a good thing for everybody. Exactly. So the PlayStation 4, there was an update this week with a few notable improvements, but at least one previously promised feature was missing. What does the update bring? Right. Uh, in terms of big announcements, probably the biggest advancement here is that you can down, now do a suspend and resume in the PS4, much like you can on the Xbox One, whereas if you turn the Xbox One off and turn it back on, you'll jump right back into where you left your game. Same thing with the PS4 now. You don't have to worry about how far it was to the last save point. Uh, you can just jump right back in exactly where you left off, which is a great thing. You can also search for friends on Facebook now, which is cool. But they didn't add in the Spotify uh, feature, which is what, something I'm looking forward to, that they're killing off their Music Unlimited service adding in Spotify integration sometime in the near future, but uh, but not this week, unfortunately. Okay, this one. So today uh, in the New York Times, Farhad Manju had a piece about auto racing being the new golf for Silicon Valley big wigs. <laughs> now, you and I talked before and you said, this isn't really that new, Megan. Uh, but, but I was just, I wanted to, what do you make of it? Because he his article really leans toward the idea of this being just part of the Silicon Valley old boys club. And I mean, you're, you're part of this community. Do you see many women at the racetrack? Uh, more and more, certainly, uh, especially if you go down to uh, the, the Pe Pebble Beach Concours, the, there's a big uh, set of historic races that happen right before Pebble Beach. And certainly you just see a lot of women there racing as well, which is great to see. Um, and you certainly see a lot of venture capitalists and a lot of uh, people who made a lot of money through technology there as well. Uh, there are a lot of racing programs that cater to the quote unquote gentleman drivers out there, basically people who show up on the weekends, drive their cars around 
probably crash them into something and then fly home on Monday and, and write a big check to pay for whatever the damages were. Uh, that's that's nothing new. That's something that's been going on for a long time now. It's just that you know a lot of people making a lot of money these days tend to be making it through technology versus maybe you know 20, 30 years ago it was maybe through uh, investments or other real estate that kind of thing. Uh, so it's it's ultimately the same old thing. Uh, cars, fast cars have always been uh, a toy of the rich. Uh, it's just that these days people are getting rich through technology. It seems like more than any other way. But uh, to me, it's very encouraging because I love fast cars and and uh, you know it's something to aspire to for sure. And you're not a golfer. Uh, I, I've played golf in the past, but I'm terrible at it. So it's, no, I it's just not for me. I'm not that coordinated. <laughs> So last time you were here, you were getting ready to come out to the West Coast to test Yamaha, Yamaha's new sport bike. How was it? Uh, what? Yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, so it's the new R3, which is a little uh, not very powerful bike. It's only got about 30 horsepower. But basically, we're seeing this really great influx uh, of lower cost, uh, not that fast, not scary motorcycles, really intended to get more people on bikes. Easy to learn, easy to ride on, but still a lot of fun. We were on the track with that thing. I had a great time riding around at Thunder Hill Raceway Park on that. It was a very capable bike, despite not being that fast and certainly not intimidating. Uh, starts at about five grand. Uh, real nice bike coming out in about a month. Uh, so if you're looking to ride, it'd be a, a great place to start. Did they let you keep it? No, we don't get to keep those things. <laughs> Everything goes back. Uh, I did have a good time. Just one day. Hopefully I'll get to spend a little bit more time on it so I can do a full review. Uh, but no, those things uh, go back to where they belong. Right. You have to. You still have your journalistic integrity. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim Stevens, editor-at-large at CNET. You can read more about everything we talked about at his Week in Review articles and other articles at CNET. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Megan. Coming up, the Ellen Powell verdict is still up in the air, and the force is with one drone maker on a mission. But first, you need to know about MeUndies.com. We spend 90% of our lives in our underwear. With MeUndies, you'll get great fitting underwear that's two times softer than cotton. MeUndies are the most comfortable underwear you will wear, plus they're stylish. There's so many options from polka dots, plaids, funky pinstripes to dozens of colors for men and women. You can check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com slash twit. This level of quality would typically retail for two times the MeUndies price. There are no retail middlemen or middlewomen. That means that you save more money. MeUndies is made from an environmentally friendly and incredibly soft fabric called Modal. It's sustainably sourced from beechwood trees in the Austrian Alps. Having comfortable underwear will change the way you feel every day. Once you try MeUndies, you will never go back. So get yourself some good underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash twit. Get 20% off and free shipping on your first order. You can save even more when you buy a pack. They guarantee you'll be happy or your first pair is free. That's 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com slash twit. We thank MeUndies for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. At 2 p.m. Pacific time in San Francisco today, a jury of six women and six men reached a verdict in Ellen Powell's gender discrimination lawsuit against Silicon Valley venture capital firm Kleiner, Perkins, Caulfield, and Byers. Now, according to sources live blogging from the courtroom, the jury ruled in favor of Kleiner Perkins, deciding that gender was not a substantial motivating reason for the company's failure to promote Ms. Powell to senior partner or to general partner. Neither was gender a substantial motivating reason for Kleiner Perkins' decision to terminate Powell's employment. And a testament to how the internet moves faster than people, Twitter immediately lit up with no on all counts tweets until it seemed that someone might have counted wrong or changed their vote on the fourth count. Nine of the 12 jurors were needed to vote no, but only eight said they voted no when asked the question of whether or not Kleiner Perkins fired Powell after she decided to sue them. The jury went back into deliberations where they still were the last time that I checked Twitter. Now, if I could just get Twitter to beam directly into my brain or maybe like, you know, into my bloodstream, I would know if there was a, a, a jury, but I think maybe it's going to last past this evening. We will report on it on Monday. This morning on Tech News Today, Mike reported that Slack, the chat app for business collaboration, was valued at $2.76 billion during a funding round. Just after this morning's show, Slack confirmed that a database containing user profile information was compromised over the course of four days in February. In a company blog post, Slack says they've blocked the unauthorized access and added two-factor authentication, urging Slack users to turn it on immediately. 
The Daily Dot reports that Apple, Salesforce.com, and other companies are coming out against Indiana's new Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which could allow companies to legally discriminate against gay, bisexual, and transgender people. Yesterday, Mark Benioff, CEO of Salesforce.com, tweeted that the company is canceling all programs that require customers or employees to travel to Indiana. And today, Apple CEO Tim Cook tweeted that the company was deeply disappointed in Indiana's new law, adding that around the world, Apple strives to treat every customer the same, regardless of where they come from, how they worship, or who they love. And finally, have you heard of Oliver C? Last month, he created the Millennium Falcon, Falcon drone that immediately went viral. Now, this French Star Wars geek YouTuber is on a mission to create drones out of drones out of every Star Wars spacecraft there is. Now, these are fully functional drones built from foam and aluminum. The latest one is the Imperial Star Destroyer. We'll have a link to Oliver C's videos and his DIY tutorial in our show notes at twit.tv. And have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey. Tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous, and we really want to know what you think so we can make this and all other Twitch shows better. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can always write to us at TN2 at twit.tv, and you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Now, I've been asking you to post your selfies watching Tech News tonight, and we have had a great response. Today's TN2 selfie fan of the day is Tony Wang, who listens to TN2 while working in the studio and sporting his own unique meerkat setup. Thanks for listening, Tony. Now, get back to work. So send us more. Tag your pictures with hashtag TN2Selfie on Twitter, Google+, Instagram, or via email to TN2 at twit.tv. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and we will show your selfie on this program right now. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.